Welcome. This is World Media of the News on the World Radio. And we present in this episode the main events of the most televised revolution, aka Ambazonian War of Independence. Coming up next, the main events in chronology. On the 6th of October 2016, an association of the common law anglophone lawyers met in Baminda and started to call for a four-day sit-down strike from all court actions as from the 11th to the 14th of October 2016. This decision wasn't instantaneous. According to Dr. Nkongo Felix Agbobala, president of the FACO Lawyers Association, they started on the 9th of May 2015, where over 700 Anglophone common law lawyers met in Baminda to address the issues affecting them, wrote a memo to the government to create an ad hoc commission on the erosion of the common law, redeploy all civil law magistrates to civil law jurisdictions, transfer all common law magistrates to common law jurisdictions. 13 February 2016, the mayor again in Boya for the second time, reiterating the bombing the resolutions for the government to redress the problems relating to the bilingual, bijural, and bicultural nature of the country. Nothing happened. Nobody spoke anything. So because nothing happened, nobody said anything, they decided to call for a strike on the 6th of October. 8th of November 2016, lawyers decided to carry out a peaceful demonstration in Bamenda. They are being dispersed by the gendarmes with tear gas, some brutalized, wigs and robes seized. The lawyer strike action is prolonged indefinitely. November 21st, 2016, that is 40 days after the lawyers had announced the strike action, the Anglophone teachers, led by Tarsan Wilfred and Fontaine Neba, joined the lawyers in order to call for the government's attention to their francophonization, adulteration, infiltration and destruction of the Anglophone subsystem of education and subsequent marginalization of its people. This marked the beginning of school shutdown. From this Monday, other Anglophones from other sectors began joining the strike, notably in Bamenda, a radio icon known as Mancho Bebekse carried on a demonstration with a coffin in Bamenda town. 25th and 26th November weekend, Prime Minister and Head of Government, Young Philomon, organized a meeting with the lawyers and the teachers in Bamenda. The Prime Minister agreed to satisfy a number of resolutions adopted during the meeting. 28th November, that is one week after the teachers announced their strike, the students of the University of Boya joined their teachers by rising against their Vice Chancellor, Dr. Nalova Lyonga, accusing her for embezzling 50,000 francs presidential grant and imposing 10,000 francs CFA for late fee payment as well as 10,000 francs CFA for late registration fee. In the course of the no violence strike, some students are arrested, beaten, and some raped. <laughs> Same November 28, the permanent secretary of the Organization of the Business Law in Africa, OHADA, handed an English version of the OHADA law to the government of Cameroon. According to the lawyers, the government behaved as if this was their only demand. Because of this, they hardened their stance by demanding for a re-establishment of the common law bench in the National Assembly, common law bench in the Advanced School of Administration and Magistracy, and the return to federalism as the only way to maintaining the coexistence of the both cultures. 30th November, a statement from the Prime Minister's office announced the recruitment of 1,000 bilingual teachers. 2 billion francs CFA subvention for lay private and denominational schools and the creation of an ad hoc committee to look into the problems tabled by the lawyers and the teachers. December 2, 2016, Honorable Joseph Weber stormed the National House of Assembly by condemning the actions of the security forces against the students of Boya and slammed the 2 billion subvention. People can do what has been done to our children in West Cameroon. I call it West Cameroon because you will never take it out of our mouths again because that is a territory in which we believe in freedom. To go out on the street and demonstrate is a basic right for us. 
And that is why we are saying that there are two Cameroons that came together. If you are telling us, like a state minister stood here last year and told us that what happened in Cameroon is like dropping a few cubes of sugar into a basin of water. Who is the sugar and who is the water? I'm asking the government bench of Cameroon. Who is that you rape our children? I listened the other night, an offer of uh, a thousand jobs, an offer of uh, two billion francs for lay schools, and I laughed at myself. Are my people slaves? So you now take them to be your dogs that you can beat and wound and maim, break their bones, then throw a piece of meat for them to fight over. It has to end. Video goes viral. 10 December 2016, a video of an Anglophone minister vehemently denying the existence of an Anglophone problem in Cameroon is out. The Your position is clear, it's yes. known yes. Uh, that there is no Anglophone problem. Yes. You've constantly repeated that. Yes, and I, I will say it, I said it yesterday, I'm saying it today, I will say it tomorrow. There is no Anglophone problem in Cameroon. Tension is stirred, shared, distributed and provoked. By 5th December 2016, in Bamenda, the taxi drivers, commercial motorcyclists and traders have joined the strike. By now, all schools, public and private, in the both Anglophone regions have been affected. It's two weeks before the end of Christmas break. There's fear the term might end without schools resuming. The fear of UNESCO sanction is highlighted. 6th December 2016, the CACSC. Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society Consortium, made up of lawyers, teachers, and trade unions, is created to dialogue with the government. December 27, 2016, the ad hoc committee meetings held in Bamenda for the teachers and Yaoundé for the lawyers failed because they both demanded for the release of all Anglophone youths arrested from their hometowns to Yaoundé. 31st December, the President of the Republic, in his annual traditional speech, reacts to Federalist and Secessionist opinion. Cameroon is one and indivisible. It shall so remain. The 1st of January 2017, a website introduced the creation of a movement of the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroon, Morex, and through its spokesperson, Ntumfo Embo Herbert, laid a roadmap to the restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroon that declared every Monday a ghost town of civil disobedience. As from Monday, the 2nd of January 2017 to Monday, the 30th of September 2017. It is January 2017. Schools are supposed to resume the next Monday, the 9th. The government is making sure this happens. For January 2017, the consortium responded to a press release asking the entire Anglophone community to observe a ghost town on Monday, the 9th. Cyber warriors, citizen journalists, and activists go to work. Monday, the 9th came. No schools, no movement complete shutdown. This marked the genesis of ghost towns in the both Anglophone regions. The government responded by releasing some arrested and detained students to return to the negotiation table as demanded by the lawyers and the teachers of the consortium. 12th and 13th January 2017, the Teachers Ad Hoc Committee meeting held two working sessions in Bamenda, each ending late in the night. There were rumors that the teachers were already beguiled on the hostage and giving in to the government. The social media did its job. News spread like wildfire. Tension is evoked between the late hours of the 13th and the early hours of the 14th, just past midnight. While the last session was going on, there were violent clashes between the citizens of Bamenda and the police forces, leading to civilian injuries and the burning of three vehicles at the customs office. Because of this, the consortium decided to call off the press conference scheduled for 11 a.m. that Saturday the 14th, whose purpose was to explain the decisions of the ad hoc committee meeting and seek proper approbation before calling off the strike. Instead, the consortium, through a press briefing 
on the 14th of January 2017 called for another ghost town, this time for two days, 16th and 17th January. According to them, this was to protest the brutality and obstinate use of force by the government forces registered in those early hours of the 14th January 2017. In this press briefing, the consortium also called for a referendum for the people of West Cameroon to decide their future. Monday, the 16th of January 2017, the president of the ad hoc committee for the teachers decided to terminate its mission. Tuesday, 17th of January 2017, after the ad hoc commission submitted its report to the government, the Minister of Territorial Administration and Decentralization signed a ministerial order banning all the activities of the CACs and the Southern Cameroon National Council SCNC, throughout the national territory and proceeded to arrest some key leaders. In the night of the 17th to the 18th of January 2017, the president of CASC, Dr. Felix Kongo Agbobala, and his secretary general, Dr. Fontem Naba, were arrested from Boya and taken to Yonde. The same day, the internet is shut down in the both Anglophone regions in Cameroon. 19 January 2017, Mancho Bibixi is arrested from Baminda and taken to Yonde. 21st January 2017, Anglophone Chief Justice Ayapur at the Supreme Court was also arrested in Yonde. Other leaders fled the country and went into hiding. When the leaders of the CACs were arrested and some fled out of the country, their operation and command systematically shifted to the diaspora and the strike action welcomed a new phase. Those were the early main events that started the ongoing crisis which became so bloody by the end of 2017 that we shall be presenting in the second part of this series. I am Kingsley Mangola Wamabono and thanks for listening until next time this is war radio on the war media after news